Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with a Caitlyn supplementary guide and this is going to take a look at Lethality Caitlyn. And in particular, we're going to take a look at Dustblade first item Caitlyn. So it's not really a full Lethality build, but it's we're going for Dustblade first into a normal crit build. So we're going to talk about some build variations as we go along. But let's just begin. So basically, we're gonna go for Dustblade first item. So now Dustblade is a really, really strong item now after the the um, the buff to it. So it gives you 55 AD, 8, 18 armor pen. Of course, you have 10 ability haste as well, and you have the Night Stalker passive, which basically gives your auto attack 60 to 160 bonus physical damage and a 99% slow for like only 0.35 seconds. So if you get a takedown, it gets refreshed. So basically, the main point of going for Dustblade first item is number one, it gives you a ton of AD. Number two, it gives you a ton of armor penetration. So it's literally the the probably the highest damage physical item, or pro not probably, but it is the highest damage physical item you can get on your first item slot. So basically, the goal of, with Dustblade is to spike on one on your first item and try to snowball from there. So, the important thing about Dustblade is you want to rush it first before boots. So you only go for boots after you complete Dustblade. So that's something that's important to know. So for the boots, I like to actually go for Gluttonous Greaves because obviously we get the AD and the, and the Omnivan. But, of course being Lethality, you can double down on going for Lethality by going for the Boots of Dynamism. So it gives you a little bit less AD but it gives you 10 Armor Pen, which is nothing uh, to scoff at at all. Which is going to double down on your early game power, but... Um, I like to actually just go for for Gluttonous Grease because I don't want to commit so so highly into Lethality and I actually think that um, just going for normal um, Gluttonous Grease is just better. And then of course we go into Bloodthirster, 55 AD, 12% physical vamp, the additional AD and attack speed when you're high on health. Uh, pretty stock standard, um, you know, first crit item for ADCs now. Then you have, um, of course, your IE for more AD as well as uh, increased crit damage. And of course, you also have your Maul Reminder for the Grievous Wounds, Armor Pen, as well as being a crit item. Now, if you notice, you will, you are going for IE second um, after se as a second crit item after Bloodthirster. So if you wanted to, you could actually swap these two around. Because IE, of course, is better when you are at, you know, of course, um, you know, three crit items. And especially if they have tanks, this is going to be a better setup. So last item, you do have a couple options. Your first option is going to be Shield Bow. Of course, uh, you know, it gives you the shield and, you know, gives you crit, attack speed, uh, AD, um, you know, and all that good stuff. Uh, but, of course, you could also go for something else like the Magnetic Blaster, uh, which, of course, is going to give you that extra utility at the very end. Uh, of course, you could go so also go for, like, other utility slash, um, useful, uh, slash useful items like, of course, your... Uh, your Garden Angel, your, your, you know, your Maw, and, uh, you know, items like these, your Crown, things like that. So another thing you can and should do is, if you manage to hit full build, meaning you have Dustblade plus your 4 crit items, and you actually reach to this point in the game, you want to sell your Dustblade and you want to get one of those items, which is, of course, your, your GA, your, you know, your Maw, you know, items, uh, of course, like that. You know, because the, the reason is, Lethality sucks in the late game because uh, that's when people already have armor. Even if they they don't have armor items, they will get armor passively by leveling up. So your lethality really wouldn't matter all that much anymore. It's really an early game kind of stat, and then you of course uh, you know want to sell that and get something better. So for your runes, you do have a couple options. So first up, we have of course lethal temple, which is my default option. Of course, getting attack speed is really useful, even with the lethality built. Uh, you know, attacking quickly is always going to be good, especially since we're going for a crit build afterwards. Brula is a no-brainer because we're ADC auto-attacking a lot. Giant Slayer is generally going to be your best option here, um, as assuming enemy enemies build bonus health. Now, in this particular game we're going to see later, uh, basically no enemy builds health at all. So I'm actually going to go for Coup de Gras in this particular matchup because there no one is building health, so Giant Slayer is going to be useless. So I'll go for a bloodline here for more um, vamp. You could also go for uh, alacrity, but I think that there is already enough from Lethal Tempo. And of course, you go for your bone plating or your overgrowth for your defensive stats. So the other very interesting option you could go for is going for first strike. So first strike, again, kind of doubles down on this lethality kind of deal. So basically, with the the lethality, if you have a first strike up. Uh, even if you don't have your first strike up with the lethality build, you can burst someone down really quickly if you combo them correctly. So for example, if they run into a trap and you immediately EQ, auto auto them, they're gonna get bursted, you know, like instantly. So because headshot damage plus the, the dust blade damage is absolutely insane. And 
basically with the first strike this is that burst is going to give you gold and it's going to increase your damage so first strike on on caitlin you know with lethality is definitely um something that you know you could go for especially if you're already pre-planning to go for lethality uh, but otherwise, the more consistent option is going to still be Lethal Temple. And for the spells, you want to go for Flash, uh, obviously, and you want to go for Ghost. Uh, of course, you know, for the, for the uh, mobility to kite around fights and to run away slash chase people down. Uh, but you could also, of course, go for Exhaust if you really need it. But without further ado, let's jump straight into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so hopping into the gameplay, the first thing I want to point out is we kind of lost the game from draft already. As you guys can see, we have a Soraka jungle. Basically, the Soraka was speaking some kind of language that I did not understand, and the only word I understood from that is support. So I'm going to assume that the Soraka wanted to play support and just locked in Soraka, but the, the person who was assigned support, which is the Pike, basically either did not understand or refused or both, and we basically landed up with a Soraka jungle. Now, in case you guys like didn't realize this, Basically, the game is literally lost from draft because all the enemy team has to do is invade the Soraka and Soraka will die. Now, they don't have to do it now. They could do it after Soraka does one or two camps and she's like low. And basically, after that, the game is just done because Soraka can get killed on repeat, her camps can get stolen, and really there's not much that uh, the laners can really do to really protect her. Right, because Katarina's not going to get parity, Garen's not going to get parity, me and Pike might get parity, so maybe we can help her on our side of the map, but basically, other than that, um, she's going to get completely destroyed if the opponents play properly. So, basically, we got into this game in the mindset that this is probably going to be a losing game, and other and other than that, our team also gets very badly outskilled, because on, on our side, uh, of course, Yumi and Lulu outscale us by a, a ton, um, you know, Fizz skills really well as well, and so does Jace, whereas on our side, probably only Soraka and Garen really skills well. Caitlyn skills alright, but not as well as Kai'Sa, and Katarina and Pike, you know, will sort of fall off unless they get super duper fed. So, this is kind of the main reason why I decided to go for the Lethality build, because I realized that if we don't win the game in the early game, we're never gonna win the game. So here, we get into a huge fight, I get exhausted, and that damage from Kai'Sa was absolutely insane. I did not expect her plasma proc to do that much damage and you know I play Kai'Sa myself and I rank Kai'Sa as the best ADC that's pretty much why I completely got destroyed there by the Kai'Sa so um, yeah it's, we're off to a bad start so even though we just died one time basically as I mentioned uh, basically we're gonna get completely outskilled and we could get completely destroyed so there's no point build going for like a scaling build my, my opinion here is I should just go for um, the lethality build to try to spike early and try to get an advantage in the early game and if we don't win the game you know um in a decent amount of time like before 20 minutes or, or whatnot we're basically not gonna win the game anyway so might as well just go for an early game build to try our best to win the game in the early game of course uh dying and becoming first blood is not really you know what we're looking for here but you know accidents happen and you know it is what it is and we're just gonna have to move on from that now, the funny thing is, Kai'Sa is actually also building towards a Dust Blade. Um, so we're both kind of going for the same first item, and obviously Kai'Sa is, is a kill up on me, and I have a death, so obviously she's going to get there first, uh, assuming nothing happens, so that's kind of, you know, trouble. So speaking of something happening, a fight breaks out inside our jungle, so, uh, you know, obviously the enemy, you know, is doing that invade thing that I mentioned just now. I get hit by a fist ulti, I'm going to flash away to prevent uh, me from taking the, the uh, E damage, which might kill me. Now I'm just kind of running down uh, the fist with my auto attack. I have, I have my full stack lethal tempo now, I get the kill onto the... The Yumi and Katarina out lowers uh, Fizz low enough for me to pick up the double kill. Seraphine pops on over and I'm able to lock on the ult and pick up a random triple kill. Now this is what we're talking about. Um, getting these three kills is huge because this actually gives me enough gold to, to uh, almost enough gold to get my dust blade. So I'm gonna have to get this tower plate and now I'm gonna have enough gold uh, for my dust blade. On the way out just picking up an extra minion and giving Kai'Sa just a little bit of poke and now we can back. Double buffs uh, in hand as well, Dust Blade on base, and now we're ahead of the curve. Because now you, you look at our goal, we're actually now 500 gold up on Kai'Sa, and now we have Dust Blade completion, whereas she does not. At least not yet. So here with the Dust Blade, this is really huge, because the Dust Blade damage is going to be insane. Here you can see I'm pinging for assistance, because I'm on my Dust Blade spike. I want to start a fight with the Kai'Sa if possible. Uh, although the huge wave is kind of crashing in here. Now here I look at the situation, I see the, the, the ulti coming in. So here I'm still I'm still looking for the chase, so here you can see I'm just auto attacking them down. 
and here I actually get them really low and I pop the ulti for the kill onto the Kaiser. Now, I had no right to get this kill because all Yumi had to do was detach and block that uh, uh, ulti from the Kaiser. But of course this is solo queue, so knowing that this is obviously, not obviously, but likely not gonna happen, I just ult the Kaiser anyways and the Yumi ends up messing up by detaching and reattaching again and I get the free kill on Kaiser. Now with the Dust Blade Spike, I'm gonna get, you know, uh, I got the kill, I'm gonna get the tower and here Yumi actually walks into a trap, gets full combo by me and is actually left on 1 HP. I nearly actually killed, if I actually committed more uh, to tanking 1 or 2 tower shots, I would've easily gotten the kill and got out of it, so that's kind of a, a, a mistake there by me. And another mistake by me is overstaying, here I really have nowhere to run, I get exhausted by Kai'Sa and I basically just get, just get bursted down by Kai'Sa and Fizz. Um, the reason why I stayed there for so long is actually because I saw Fizz in the mid lane and I was not expecting him to rotate so quickly but um, you know, that was obviously on me because the moment he left Vision in mid I should have been aware and I should have immediately uh, ran away but I had a, a false sense of security that he was mid because I saw him there and yeah I basically baited myself uh, in this uh, scenario. So here uh, regardless we have actually picked up our gluttonous grief so once again you know another kind of um, major spike you know Boots is always kind of a major spike because the stats they give are kind of insane. So here, we're, you're trying to see if we can find a fight here. Fizz is able to secure the Ocean Dragon, uh, but my team looks like they're looking for a fight, so I'm just kind of following around uh, and seeing if anything can be done. Um, don't really hit the Q there, and nothing much really happens here. I'm just going to go back to lane and farm up. So here with my Dust Blade, I can definitely take down squishy targets like Seraphine, for example. Kai'Sa without Yumi can be taken down as well. Fizz is a little bit difficult, so Seraphine tries to step up. So let's see what happens here. Here you can see, look at that Dust Blade auto, she's like at half health from like basically nearly full health. Headshot at the ready, headshot, uh, headshot again, and she's basically 1 HP. Now I honestly thought that she would die there, but I, I can't believe that she survived. Either way, I could not commit anymore uh, to the kill. I have no summoner spells, no way to, to get anywhere closer, and Kai'Sa and Yumi are just behind her, which is something that I already knew because obviously they were spotted on vision um, toward the river area, so I couldn't overcommit to the kill anyways. Uh, but yeah, you can see how strong the Dust Blade Spike really is. Uh, and here, Pike tries to come in, um, hooks the Yumi away, uh, but unfortunately we can't kill Yumi fast enough and she's able to reattach to the Kai'Sa and Pike kind of wastes his ulti, which is kind of unfortunate. So here I have a full stack Needle Tempo, they're gonna have to run away. And now I'm just life stealing off of the minions basically at this point and we can, we can look for more tower plates. So now, looks like this Lethality build is going really swimmingly for now. So why do I think that this is not the main build for Kitty? Well, the main issue with this build is two things. Firstly, it's gonna fall off in the late game compared to if you just went for 4 crit items at the beginning. And secondly, this build is kind of a lot more situational uh, than like going for it every game in my opinion. I think you should really only go for it like in, in particular circumstances like this game. You shouldn't be going for Lethality Kitty every game. I think that most likely um, you know, the four, uh, 4 crit item built into a, into another item, uh, into like a defensive item, is probably going to be better and more consistent uh, overall. But just look at that, uh, you know, hit shot uh, plus dust blade damage onto the phase. One third of his health in one auto attack, absolutely bonkers. So here, no vision enemy, so we don't want to overextend for the tower. But we see Fizz and Kai'Sa and Yumi and, uh, down in the bot lane. That's when we go for the tower here. Seraphine trying her best to defend the tower against three people. Uh, really difficult for her, of course, because if she gets hooked by Pike, she's instantly dead. So here we are unfortunately unable to finish the Tara Fizz comes in, hits the ulti. We unfortunately uh, can't dodge the ulti, pretty much just get one shot by the Fizz. So all three of our deaths at this point, if I'm not mistaken, are are to the Fizz. I think two of them, um, he altered us, and the last one was the one where he ganked uh, when we were overextended. So literally, we're kind of only dying to the Fizz, but of course that's part and parcel of the game, so we can't really use it as an excuse or, or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, we really have to, uh, you know, watch out for the phase. And sooner, sooner rather than later, we want to get ourselves the stasis to, of course, uh, prevent ourselves from getting one shot by him when we get hit by the ulti. It's quite obvious at this point that he's aiming for us, you know, for the ulti in particular, which obviously makes sense because we're, we are basically the most fed member of our team. No one else has kills other than me and one kill on Pike. So here I'm going to defend the tower against Jace, really important, I remove his first strike to reduce his damage uh, on me, but the Jace is actually really really fed. Uh, despite being 0 and 0 and 0, he has more gold than me, I think it's probably from taking the top lane tower against um, Garen I, th I think, but just look at that shock blast damage, it does one third of my health, 
he doesn't have first strike up and I have bone plating. If he had first strike and I didn't have bone plating, that's like half of my health instantly gone. So that's really really scary. Jace is really really scary. He he has the same amount of gold as me and he doesn't even have kills. There I barely dodge a shot glass and I'm trying to remove his first strike again which I am able to do successfully. But we definitely have to watch out for this Jace because he can just go go in with a full combo and just one shot us 100 to 0 if he lands the shot glass into the of course the hammer and his full combo so we don't want that to happen so here my team is finally actually able to pick up some kills onto Seraphine, Kaisa and Yumi which is amazing um, it's obviously lovely that you know you, your team gets kills you know without you so here they look like they're fishing for more so I'm just tr trying to help them out by launching an ulti uh, onto the Jace which obviously just does a decent amount of damage of uh, considering he's at full health uh, but it kind of goes sideways and instead the Jace picks, picks up a double kill. Now as I mentioned, he has no kills but he's incredibly fed. So it's no surprise to me here that he's killed two people. Now my team is on the run. Uh, I'm trying to just get close to, to uh, see if uh, my team commit to a fight. They do. And here I'm trying to flash over to kill the Fizz. He goes into stasis but against a Caitlyn, really stasis is not your friend because you can just trap onto the stasis and... Uh, basically when they come out of stasis, they're gonna get instantly trapped. There's nothing they can do, so it's kind of a waste to stasis when the Caitlyn's nearby. And we're able to pick up the kill and the shutdown on the Fizz. Uh, with that, of course, we're incredibly fed, the most fed member of our team. Uh, but on, on the side of the enemy team, you can see that basically, Jace is like 1k up on us and Kai'Sa is just 500 gold behind. So it's a really, really tough match. We get the kill onto Jace, which is huge. Get the kill onto Kaisa after a long fight and a lot of healing and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, Seraphine runs away from Yumi, so Yumi becomes a free extra kill. And Seraphine out goes to Narnia, which allows me to pick up the quadra kill. Now, I'm not gonna lie here, um, I kinda lost my mind at this point. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I don't know why I'm going to the dragon to clear the ward when obviously Fizz is gonna be somewhere nearby in the area and I just get one shot by him and give him a free shutdown. Uh, what I obviously should have done here is I should have just run back to my tower, recall, and bought items. Instead of running at the dragon pit and clearing the ward for no reason when obviously we're not even going to do the dragon uh, right now so that's kind of kind of stupid for me and, and kind of another mistake uh, you know happened on my part so we give fizz a huge shutdown obviously that's not what we want now fizz is uh, obviously now we're the most fed member in the entire game but very closely behind is jace and then closely behind after that is Fizz and Kaisa. So uh, the enemy team is incredibly fed compared to us. There are 3k gold up on us and obviously the only reason why it's only a 3k difference is mainly because of my gold. Uh, like without me you can see my team is all like at 6-7k gold which is nowhere close to the like 8, 8, 8k, 9k gold that the team has. Jace is like 10k gold so uh, it's a complete disaster. So here uh, Dragon Fight is breaking out. So here I'm just of course staying at the back and seeing if we can really get anything done. Trying to land a Q onto Kaisa which we do. And um, here we're just staying, you know, cautious, you know, of course we FaZe can one-shot us, so we're kind of just trying to stay stay uh, cautious and stay away from him. Here uh, our Katarina dies, FaZe uses the ult on someone who's not me, which is amazing because this allows me to actually, you know, just go go for him and get the kill on him. Now here I'm losing the 1v1 to Kai'Sa obviously, but I'm able to run to my team and which allows me to pick up the kill onto her, uh, which is absolutely amazing. So now... We're just gonna heal off of the wave and we also have a Soraka to heal us so we are able to get back to full health and go ahead for another push onto the mid lane tower. So it's been uh, it's been going pretty well uh, for the most part uh, in the match. Now we're not at 12k go in prime position to carry the team. Um, Seraphine overextends once again the ult is able to finish her off and uh, you know Jace comes in from the side, don't know what that flash was, I uh, hear the mistake he's making, actually technically you can't say this is a mistake, because if he focuses me, Soraka is going to heal me, so he has to focus the Soraka first, but because he cannot one-shot the Soraka because Soraka had Seraph's Embrace, this gave me enough time to auto-attack him down 100 to 0 and Soraka even survives, so um, not too much that Jace could have really done there in terms of his decision making in the fight, but the best decision would be not, to not take the fight. Like even though he's fed, he shouldn't really be trying to 1v3 us, especially when uh, I'm there who, and I'm equally as fed as him. So really, uh, not the best decision making by the Jace uh, over there, which obviously I don't mind getting another kill onto the Jace, uh, that's always a good thing. Speaking of poor decision making, Pike decides to somehow go in 1v4 and suicides as well. So this is really, I don't know what's going on here. But here we stand behind to let Karina jump to us so that she gets out of danger. And uh, 
Of course now Baron is up, so we you know we don't want to have multiple people dying because that basically means that we're gonna lose Baron. So here in terms of items at this point, we have of course the Dust Blade. Now we have IE as well as Bloodthirster as well. So we're getting to you know really fed kind of ter territory. And we also have our stasis complete completed, which is crucial because obviously we're gonna need that against uh, you know, the face. So here Jace misses the shot blast, misses the combo, gets one shot by me and the Garrett. Once again, the trap's under the GA, so GA, you know, doesn't work against Caitlyn either. You're just gonna get trapped there. And we get a free pick onto Jace. So, so here, Fizz comes up from nowhere and out me here. I'm able to stasis to block his E and R damage. And you can see this is the weakness of Fizz. The moment you stasis his ult, he's just done because he, he wastes his ult. He wasted his E to try to gap close. And now he cannot escape, so that's basically kind of why I don't think Fizz is really all that good because he's very committal. So the moment he commits with his E, that's when I stasis because it means that he, there's no way he can get out unless he tries to flash away. That's the only way he can try to get out, but even that didn't really help him. So really key uh, kill onto the Fizz and we're, you know, we're in a really, really commanding um, position. Although I have to say that Jace is doing a very good job of keeping up with us with a lot less kills. He's getting all his gold from like minions and towers, so he's still doing really well in terms of gold. And he's gone from full lethality into GA, which is a really uh, strange build in my opinion. Because uh, if you're going for full lethality, why not go for like a mana moon or go for a little bit more tankiness, like instead of going for a GA. So um, anyways, you know, that's a separate topic altogether. But here Jace once again... Uh, goes over commits onto the Soraka, we're able to finish him off. Fizz once again stays his right in front of me, Get once again, once again gets rooted and dies. And now we can basically just run after the rest of their team. Seraphine uh, gets chunked, dies. Kaisa tries to invis away, Yumi dies, Kaisa dies. And basically just off of that one beautiful fight, we can just end the game. Because the whole enemy team got aced, and we have a wave in mid that we pushed out previously. And we can just end the game. So here you can see how Lethality Caitlyn is able to really snowball the game and win the game before you know people get too many items. And it's a really early game focus build, which is why this game went so well. But if we got to another like one or two more items, we would we're gonna fall off and the game would be a disaster. But anyways, I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.